Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. The HDMI standard is not well suited for long cable runs, but there are some cables out there that let you go well beyond what you could get out of a traditional HDMI cable, and this is one of them. This is the iBirdie 4K fiber optic HDMI 2.1 cable. And what this does is it has a little fiber optic transmitter and receiver built into the connector. So it converts those electrical signals to light and then back again so you can go much longer distances. The one I have here is the 50 foot cable, but they have one that goes up to 328 feet. So you've got some good distance options available. And what we're gonna do in this episode is take a look and see what this cable can do and whether or not it can support all the modes out there. And we'll also look at its gaming performance, especially insofar as input lag is concerned. Now, I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the cable came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, the company is not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded. Nobody has paid for this review and all the opinions you're about to see are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this cable is all about. Now, the price point on this comes in at $50 for the 50 foot version, basically a dollar per foot. The longer cables are a little less expensive on a per foot basis. Now, one of the things you'll notice on the connectors here is that each connector has a label on it, source and display. And that's because these fiber optic cables have to be plugged in the right way in order for them to work. So the display obviously goes into your TV or projector and the source goes into the device that you're sending over to that TV or projector. It has to be plugged in in the right way. I was very impressed with the quality of these connectors. They're metal, they feel super solid. So it's got a nice build quality to it. The cable is fiber optics. So you wanna be careful about bending it too much. It is not rated for in-wall usage, at least this version. They do make versions that are rated for in-wall installation. So you do wanna check the specifications first to make sure it meets all of the applicable codes. Now, along with the cable, you also get this power cord in the box. And this can attach to either end of the cable. And what you do is put this, for example, on the source side, and then you plug this into the HDMI port. I'll give you an example on my Xbox here. And then you also connect the USB to a USB port that you've got on the device for power. And what this will do is power the transmitter and receiver. Now this can go on either end, but as you'll notice here, this cable is not very flexible. So you're not gonna have a lot of room on your television, I think, for this power cable to work because if you've got HDMI ports next to it that you're using, you're not gonna be able to squeeze this in there. So in my testing, it made the most sense to have it come from the source side, but even on some source devices, you might run into trouble here. So just be aware of that. It's one feature of the cable that is required and I think they could have designed it better. It would have made more sense, I think, maybe to have it come out of the top or something to give you more room on either side. But I guess there's no good way to do it that works in every use case. But the good news is that this can go on either end of the cable in order to keep it powered. And they do require you to use this to make sure that the cable works consistently. I will say that the cable actually worked quite well and I tested a whole bunch of scenarios. So the first test that I ran on this was a home theater test where I connected this up to my NVIDIA Shield and I had it output some 4K Dolby Vision video that had a Dolby Atmos audio track and that worked perfectly, just as good as the cable I typically have plugged into that Shield, no issues there. I also wanted to see if the HDMI audio return channel or ARC worked and that worked as well. And I was able to get my Dolby Audio transferred back from a device, in this case, my smart TV, through the receiver. So some things can actually go two ways on this cable, even though it's a directional one insofar as what end you plug into what device. And it also worked with HDMI CEC. And in this instance, I was able to control my NVIDIA Shield using my television's remote control and the TV was sending those remote commands back down the cable to the shield to move things around, and that worked just fine, just like a normal cable would work. On the gaming side, I plugged in my Xbox Series S here that can work with variable frame rates at up to 120 hertz. I plugged it into my gaming monitor for that purpose, and it was able to successfully negotiate that. FreeSync was enabled on the display, and a game that I play on the Xbox that runs at a varied frame rate 
worked out just fine as well. My display unfortunately doesn't give me real-time statistics, but the Xbox was able to switch itself into that mode successfully and everything got detected properly as well. Now I tested input lag on the cable with my analog NT mini NES clone console here. This is the lowest lag device that I own for a whole host of reasons, one of which is that it's powered by an FPGA processor and also because its controllers here connect up with these NES controller ports that don't have to go through some kind of USB interface first. So very little input lag coming out of this device. And what I do is take out my iPad, shoot the screen at 240 frames per second, push a button here on the controller and see how long it takes for that button push to get registered on screen. It is not a scientific approach necessarily, but it does give you a good baseline that you can use to compare one display to another, or in this case, one cable solution to another. And in that testing, I did not measure any difference between this cable and the one I usually use that's a lot shorter and not involving any kind of fiber optic mumbo jumbo in between. So whatever they're doing here is not introducing a lot of lag, if any. Although I suspect if I had a faster camera, we might detect a millisecond or two. But this seems to be a very good solution for video gaming when you want this much length between your console or PC and the display that you're plugging it into. So all in, this cable exceeded expectations in its performance. My only gripe being the power connector here I think could be better designed. But if you're able to accommodate that power connector again on either end of the cable, you're gonna get decent performance out of this with no noticeable lag. And it appears to be fully compatible with the HDMI 2.1 standard. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.